If you can't figure out and move your ego out of the way enough to understand that you are creating the environment that is causing this animal to feel the need to defend itself, then you are very unlikely to ever be able to change the behaviors of the animal. Hello, for those of you that do not know me, my name is Samson Pruitt. I am the owner and co-founder of Slither Incorporated. One of the things that I deal with every single week is people complaining about their mean retics. What I want you to understand is that there is no such thing as a mean snake. Snakes do not have the ability for malicious intent. What that means is they don't get angry at you and they don't try and hurt you they, unless they feel the need to defend themselves. There's no such thing as a mean retic or a mean boa or a mean Burmese python. There is a nervous and scared animal in your care that is afraid of you because of whatever it is that you're doing with that animal in your interactions. This is something that is really, really difficult for me to get across to a lot of people because of ego. And I get it. Um, I have I have 75 snakes and this is the only one that acts like this. None of my other retics exhibit this type of behavior. There's something wrong with the animal, not something wrong with what I'm doing. Well, here's the thing. In the wild, retics, and other species of reptiles obviously can be eaten by predators. So the animals that have survived over the millennia have done so by being nervous and defensive in order to be able to protect themselves from predation by other animals. So the nervous and defensive behavior has passed on down the lines. And retics that we have had in captivity for many, many generations have learned to lose that. And the responsible breeders have bred non-nervous and defensive, have bred confident animals together in order to breed out that negative defensive behavior in the pet animals that we breed and sell in captivity. I want to, to give you an idea of how you can determine what type of behavior that you're dealing with in the first place because a lot of times food aggression is mistaken for nervous and, and defensive behavior. The easiest way to determine the difference is if your retic is moving towards you. When you open up the enclosure and you go in to interact, if the snake is coming at you, that is food aggression, that is food drive. It is not a defensive action. It's not the snake being mean, the snake is expecting food. If you use your hook to tap the snake on the nose a couple of times, just a couple of times, if you continue to tap, you're poking, not tapping. Tap the nose just a couple of times when the snake turns its head away from you, that is a sign that the animal is turning off its food drive. And then you use the hook to reach into the enclosure and pull the animal to you. If you reach your hand in an enclosure with a snake that has not had its food drive turned off, you're very likely gonna take a bite. So use the hook as an extension of your hand to pull the animal to you and then pull the animal out of the enclosure. 99% of the time, even a nervous and defensive animal will completely shut up, shut down that behavior once it's in your hands because it realizes that it's not being attacked. Now, defensive behavior is when you open the enclosure and the snake pulls back away from you and is in an S-curved position and the really nervous and defensive ones will even pop their mouth open if they feel that much that threatened. What you need to understand is this is a this is a threatening behavior. It's a defensive behavior. The snake is not attempting to attack you. The snake does not want to bite you. The snake simply wants to be left alone. So if you continue to go in after the animal, then the animal is going to defend itself because you are pushing the issue and making the animal feel as if it's being attacked. 
So I want to talk about Burmese pythons because they're a very, very good example. Burmese pythons and retics are very similar in a lot of behaviors and, and very similar in a lot of different ways. Um, the difference, in my opinion, is Burmese are easy or are tameable. So in order to tame down a nippy baby berm, you pull it out of the cage every single day and you let it bite you and you spend time with it and you force an interaction with that animal until that animal becomes accustomed to interactions and overcomes its fear. Generally, in my opinion, what happens is the animal bites and bites and bites and figures out that that defensive mechanism is not doing it any good. So then it starts to run and stops the biting action because it was not successful in using that mechanism. Retics are way too smart for that. I would, I would say that 50% of retics, as a general estimate, can be tamed down by force interaction, 50% of them. But the other 50% are too smart for it. The berm, when you go in and force an interaction with the berm today, when you go back into the enclosure tomorrow, it has reset its memory. It doesn't remember the negative interaction from the day before. Retics are way too smart for that. They remember negative interactions from six months ago, some of them. I have animals in my collection that had a negative interaction with one of my employees or with myself, and I and that employee can never work with that snake again because that snake remembers that specific employee and wants to protect itself from that employee because it remembers the negative interaction. So when we have a negative interaction, I pull the employee. You're not allowed to mess with this snake anymore. We're turning that responsibility over to someone else to give that animal time to let go of the memory of that negative interaction. With reticulated pythons, you can try and force interaction with them half of the, the snakes out there will come around and become what we consider to be tame. But in my opinion, it's much, much better with nervous and defensive retics, and especially the ones that are extremely nervous and defensive, to just leave them alone. No forced interaction whatsoever. You bring the snake food. So every time that snake sees you, You've got food. Retics love food. Eventually, the animal is going to come to trust you just because you're not poking it, you're not forcing interactions with it, and every time it sees you, you're bringing food. Now, how do I clean? The easiest way, and it's real simple with smaller snakes, not so much with big snakes, but the easiest way to clean a nervous and defensive retic excuse me, without forcing any interaction is to use food to move the animal. So if you have ever fed a reticulated python, you know that when you wiggle a rat in front of their face, they wrap it up really tight. They love to grab hold of it. So what I will do with nervous and defensive hatchlings, for instance, I will have a clean tub sitting next to the tub that the nervous snake is in. I will give that snake a prey item, have it wrap it up, and then move it using the prey item while it is constricting into a clean tub. When the snake gets done eating, it is in a clean tub and it doesn't care or it doesn't even remember that it actually even happened because it was so preoccupied with the feeding and with the constricting and swallowing of the prey. When you have bigger snakes, you use bigger cages, you use bigger prey items. Hopefully, you're starting out with a nervous and defensive hatchling that by the time it's five or six or seven feet long, you're going to have built a relationship with that animal. Now, if you cannot, sometimes personalities between people and animals are just not meshing Sometimes there was a negative interaction that was so bad that the snake remembers it and will never forgive. Sometimes, most of the time, you're expecting the negative interaction to happen 
and therefore it does. Reticulated pythons absolutely read the emotional state of the person that is handling them. Absolutely. He bought a couple of snakes from us at the reptile show and he kept talking about how he had this really mean tiger retic at his house. He loved the snake. He raised it from a hatchling, but it was just mean. It tried to bite everybody who ever interacted with it. And I said, well, you know, if you would like me to, I'll come clean the enclosure, take the snake out. If it's a really, really serious case, I don't mind taking the animal and trying to work with it for a couple of months to see if we can get it turned around and then bring it back to you in a different state of mind. So he was like, oh, you'll never be able to, you'll never be able to work with this one. This one's just mean, mean, mean. And guys, I hear this every day, every single day, this snake, I have 50 snakes. I have 20 snakes. This is this snake just tries to kill me every time that I mess with it. So to make a long story short, Cassandra and I went to this house, big, beautiful house, really nice cage setups. And then there's this tiger sitting in its own piss and shit in the enclosure because everybody was afraid to clean it, covered in dry sheds. I grabbed a hook, I brought a hook with me, reached in, tapped the snake, realized instantly that there was zero aggression from this snake whatsoever. This snake was not even nervous and defensive. So to show, to make my point, I said, hey, Cassandra, come pull this snake out. Cass reached right in, grabbed the snake with confidence, pulled the snake out, held the snake while we peeled off the dry shed. Everything was perfect. Cleaned the enclosure out, showed everybody, let everybody hold the snake. The snake was totally fine because the snake was being handled by somebody who was confident and was not expecting the animal to be nervous and defensive. Put the snake back at its enclosure and I have zero doubt in my mind that that snake still behaving nervous and defensive and still sitting in a dirty enclosure because the person who owns the snake is not willing to get rid of the snake for whatever reason. This is another thing that I wanna to touch on that's really sensitive about this subject. The nervous and defensive animals generally get passed on to other people who cannot handle them. If you are expecting an animal to be nervous and defensive, you're generally gonna get what you expect. So if you, if you have a snake, a retic specifically, that is behaving nervous and defensively in your collection, please find someone who has the ability to handle nervous and defensive animals, or that animal is just going to get passed from one person to the next. Now, what that means is not that you're a bad keeper. It does not mean that you're a bad person. It does not mean that you are not capable of handling retics. What it means is it is your responsibility to understand that the behavior that you are experiencing from this animal is your actions that are creating it, not the animal's fault. If you can't get that through your head, if you can't figure out and move your ego out of the way enough to understand that you are creating the environment that is causing this animal to feel the need to defend itself, then you are very unlikely to ever be able to change the behaviors of the animal. So think about the animal, consider everything that I've said, and please understand that there is no such thing as a mean retic. There's just not. I have a thousand retics or more in my collection if you count all the hatchlings that we hatch out every year. And, and there are a handful of animals that are absolutely nervous and defensive, and there are one or two that will just never overcome it because they are so absolutely afraid of everybody. Those animals will never leave my collection because I know that no matter where I send them, that is not gonna change. And the animals at least live a good life because we just leave them alone. Forced interactions 
is not the best way to handle a retic. Thank you for listening. I will end. Do you think I need to add anything else? Or I mean, are we good? Did I miss anything? I hope everybody stays safe out there. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. Leave your retics alone. Generally, what will happen if you have a snake that's being nervous and defensive is within six days, six weeks, or six months, the leaving the animal alone and not interacting with it whatsoever will change the, st the, the mental, the emotional state of that animal and you will end up with one of the kindest and most gentle snakes that you have in your entire collection. Make sure that you understand the difference between food drive with the snake coming at you and defensive posturing with the snake pulling back and do not use the hook to poke the snake. A gentle tap on the nose will make them turn their head away. When they turn their head away, you hook the body, you pull it to your hand, you pull the snake out. Once they're in your arms, almost none of them will bite. If you have that 1% of snake that will bite you while you're holding it, you really need to give that animal the ability to overcome that nervous and defensive behavior by limiting interaction completely. I will end with this. I have seen hundreds of nervous and defensive animals. A lot of my collection is made up of animals that other people couldn't handle. And I took them in because I knew that they would be better here with me than they would be out there being handed around and passed around from person to person, person living in dirty enclosures because people are afraid to clean them and care for them. So reticulated pythons as hatchlings in the wild are tiny. They're little tiny animals. They're really, really easy to eat. So a lot of predators go after them. Once that animal hits a certain age and size, they almost all end up figuring out that they're the king of the jungle and that they lose that nervous and defensive behavior and become confident. If you feed your snake long enough, that snake will find that confidence point and be a really great animal to have in your collection. If you have an animal like that, I recommend that you breed it only to a calm and confident animal because more people need to be concerned about the temperament of the snakes that they're breeding so that we can continue to breed the nervous and defensive behavior out of them because it's not necessary and nobody needs a big 20 foot snake that is nervous and defensive. If if you are a person who has a snake, and a retic, and you cannot get beyond the nervous and defensive behavior, and you absolutely are miserable, and your animal is absolutely miserable, please reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to me. I will give you some pointers and we can try and work on it. If you're just done, then be done. Stick it in a box, ship it to me, bring it to my facility. I will trade you an animal that will be more calm and more gentle and more receptive to you as a keeper of equal or, equal or lesser value. At least that way you get something back that you can work with that you're not afraid of or you're not angry at and the snake doesn't have to spend its life being passed around from person to person to person. Thank you. Everybody stay safe.